What up guys, Joakim here, Joakim Justin Morgan, aka Joakim the Convert. In this video I want to talk about an article I just read that was discussing um, uh, relations between the Eastern Orthodox Church and the Roman Catholic Church and uh, how some of these uh, discussions that have happened over the past, especially the past six years, um, will uh, kind of continue to go and the possibility of unity in the future and um, you you know I, you can see the classroom behind me um, i am a teacher at a catholic school um, i think that as christians in general we should want and pray for the unity of the church this is what christ commands us to to do or that he examples that he models for us in the gospel, especially in the gospel of John in the prayer that he gives in the garden when he prays that they may be one as we are one. Um, so I, I think in general, the, the, the eye of the church, the, I, I don't know, the aphronema of the church should be that we always want unity, that we want peace, uh, that we want uh, the church to be as one, that we want all people to be united uh, to Christ in his one holy Catholic and apostolic church. Uh, for the Orthodox Christian, this means uh, that all of us must be Orthodox. For the Catholic, it means that you must be under the Bishop of Rome. Um, so there are different ways that we uh, would regard uh, this um, statement of being the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. Um, just, you know, for clarity sake, Catholic in the sense of uh, the Catholic Church, Catholic is used in that case as a title. When we say the one holy Catholic and apostolic church is part of the creed, we are, of course, not uh, referring to the title given to the Catholic Church, what they call their church, as in like a, a proper noun. We are, we are using it as a common noun that we are, are Catholic, that we are um, one, that we are... Um, uh, complete that the the whole of the church the the fullness of the church is in our church so we are the one holy catholic and apostolic church catholic in that case as a um uh you know as a description of the church so um the the difficulty that i see with that though is that much of these discussions seem to want to discuss um unifying the church or the church returning to a communion with one another without actual repentance or without actual um, unity of theology, without coming to a similar understanding. And that, to me, um, th that is where you get into the negative aspects that people discuss of ecumenism. Um, that, that is a false unity, and, and I, I don't want that. Um, I, I don't want a false unity. I, I, I do want unity uh, with the church, it would help me in my job. I would uh, have a much easier time um, to uh, be an Orthodox Christian that is of the same church as the Catholic Church. That would be um, easier for me, so I have personal motivations for wanting that, but I, I don't want uh, the type of unity where we come together and are united only for the purpose of um, a false unity. I, I want true unity to be uh, with the church. Um, I, I want the churches to be one in um, spirit and in truth, and, and that our theology is true, true theology. Um, and, and until those things uh, take place, I, I don't I don't understand these um, discussions. So this comes from an article that was posted at, I think it's uh, Pan Orthodox, uh, some discussion. I'll post a link in the uh, description box below and probably post it as a comment as well so you can kind of go read for yourselves about uh, the discussions. Largely it is between the um, ecumenical patriarch, the patriarch of Constantinople, and um, you know those representatives from the Catholic Church. Sometimes it involves um, primarily the Pope himself, sometimes it is uh, delegates uh, from the Catholic Church, but um, on that topic, though, that, that also um, poses some difficulty because the Orthodox Church doesn't have a pope. The ecumenical patriarch does not uh, represent the entirety of the Orthodox Church. Um, we're not, we don't, there's, he's not like the Pope of the East. So until these discussions um, involve the entirety of the um, united bishops of the Orthodox Church, the, um, well, maybe not the entirety, but at least the, like the primary patriarchs, 
Um, we, we can't have a discussion that uh, discludes the uh, patriarch of Moscow. We can't have uh, discussions that, in, that disclude the patriarchs of Jerusalem, Antioch, Alexandria, like all of those um, Serbia, you know, uh, other patriarchates. Um, these are all part of the same uh, one holy Catholic and apostolic Eastern Orthodox Church. So, um, you know, the fact that it only includes the ecumenical patriarch and is not uh, heavily discussed, one indicates a um, misunderstanding that the West has with the Eastern Orthodox Church. Like they want to look at the ecumenical patriarch or the patriarch of Constantinople as um, this Pope-like figure, and, and that's not the case. We don't have that. That That's the whole reason that the Eastern and Western Church separated in the first place. So if we are to look towards the ecumenical patriarch as uh, a figure like that, well, how is he any different than the Pope then? Um, and honestly, the Pope's a lot better at it. The, the West has a much larger church. Um, so if that's the way that we're regarding the ecumenical patriarch, that's a battle you've already lost. Uh, we lost it a thousand years ago in 1054. So um, if you want to regard the church as like the, the united bishops uh, representing the apostolic succession and the, um, the uh, uh, Petrine, Petrine um, C, uh, then I, I think you can uh, have those uh, united churches, and that's fine, but um, the current way that's going, there's too many problems with that. And as you heard from that bell, that is my class being released from Jim, and uh, that's the end of my planning period. So I have to go. You guys take it easy, and I will talk to you in another video soon.